Afternoon all, this is from your last video blog up until Wednesday 3rd of June, which was yesterday. Right, uh, your plants look healthy, on top, nice colour, they're supposed to be. Always have a look underneath, because you find little chaps like these. Obviously, if you don't like spraying with any uh, baddies, use soapy water. Also, just because it's grown under cover, I don't mean to say they can't get in there. Have a look under the leaves. Of, uh, leaks as well because if there is any little chaps they're going to lay their eggs out of the sunlight which is underneath the leak see any eggs like that just get them off and crush them with your thumbnail or an house brick or something uh, blanche leaks at the back then a 14 inch minimum blanche intermediates at the front between 6 and 14 inch blanche that's what I want so once a week I strip them off and take the old flags or leaves off which gets them nice and clean and I want them nice and straight nice and white still spraying for thrip on these as well but uh, I'm looking nice get a nice bit of meat on them don't forget it is only early June our show used to be first, uh, second Saturday September but uh, all shows have gone out the window this year there's me uh, intermediates, they've got more meat on, i.e. I going round it, they're more fatter. But uh, I'm doing well, and I've been lifted again, the leaves, with my, my uh, stretcher bars above. I think that's the highest to go now. My mate up the local primary school, he saves me all his bog rolls, he's the caretaker there. Once every six months he brings me some down. It's part of me ripping the contents up with compost. I've just finished a bag of ton, ton bag of worm casts. See, I've got a ton bag of worm, uh, rock just on the right. In this worm cast, although it feels dry as a bone, there's still worms in there. They're still fed it away. This is how they make their own moisture. Uh, begonia mixed. These was uh, plugs sent away for yonks ago. Took them a while to come through, but up this the situation we're in everything's going to be late normal plastic drinking cups 15 tray insert potted into multi-purpose compost with me vermiculite and then watered these are kept in the greenhouse obviously uh, got a nice bit of room on the end of one of the grow bags which me chilies them in so ideal place for that right this is over my fence looking at me neighbours he waters every couple of days but he never feeds so if you want a bit of colour in your lupins or whatever you're growing like I fed mine you can get a bit of colour in them you can survive on water same as us but if you have a nice meal now and then <coughs> nice white lilies come out and all got a bit of yellow as well with the, the poppies uh, back in the garage I need to put some more gladdies out or get them ready for going out they've got spurts on them so that they're, they're telling me they want to go out and that's them are the ones i'm picking the ones with the biggest shoots so i'll be sorting them out later on I'm ready to job them uh, shelly moore and claire these are i've done these two before but we'll sort them out in a bit Back garden, this is where the bluebells, white bells used to be. All I'm going to now is take off the uh, stalks. I just start chopping them off, but I just pulled most of them out because they come out near enough. I'm still letting a bit of grub from the leaves going back into the, the bulbs. I'm going to take them out later on. Before the poppies start going to seed, I'll take them off. I don't want poppies everywhere, I only want a couple near and then. Uh, watering or feeding maxi crop and tomato feed alternate with them <coughs> plus extras which are foliar feeds uh, well foliar feed with them too as well liquid fish and there's all sorts of compost teas and if they're nice and warm water everything down chilies in the tunnel on the plot they're doing well and getting a, a good bit of meat on it that was a longer Right back down to the plot again, I'm going to sort me, last of me gladdies out, put them on the 
or start another raised bed putting them out. Pull the cover back. Ready to start uh, measuring out for the gladdies. They'll know it's from uh, blackbirds and me strawberries just below me. So I went and legged it down there first because I've still got me netting tied up at the top. Put a few flowers on, which means that'll give me fruit. And these are done well. So all the knitting is down. I haven't pegged it in because there's quite a few strawberries hanging over the side as well. And I don't want to knock them up. There's also uh, runners which have gone on the footpaths either side, which has gone into woodshed. So the birds can have them. And well dip out. Right back to me, Gladys. Three lines in, spacing them out with my hand fork, which is uh, 10 inches long. So it's 10 inches either way, rows and in between me gladdies. Some people put them closer, some people put them further away. But uh, this does me last couple of years in the row, so I'm sticking to it. If you've got two shoots on, I want the strongest one. The strongest one nearest the middle of the core. So they will be left on. The other one will take it out and my thumbnail will go straight in, digging the lot out so it don't start again. The Mickey light I put under my gladdies, some people put sand, some people don't put nothing. But this uh, just stops the bottom of the core from uh, going wet and mouldy and whatever. Looks after them. Right, they've been planted out there. All I'm going, going to do is top dress with my uh, rabbit muck. Don't forget this has got uh, sterilised chop straw in. So uh, it is another bonus for the raised bed. Anything I plant out, once it comes through, I top dress with a straw. Usually from heaven, but this is rabbit muck. Then give it a good soaking. The birds will nick a bit for nesting and, and uh, whatever they want it for. But the grub in these, I've got to leak it out, but it's, it's going straight into me blueberry, which is good. But the rabbit muck, it's not strong at all, so it's good for everything. My rhubarb, which I had from mate next door last year. First pickings, you're not supposed to pick the first season. What a load. Bloody pick it. And the, the best wine you can get is from the word first pickings. So this is what I'm doing with this lot. Now that's, I had this because it was thick as a ferret and I want this for the Malvern Light Show for next year. So I'm picking me um, <coughs> rhubarb, five pound I need, so I'll get that um, weighed out. Just go over, just in case you have to clean it, top and tail it, or any bad bits, cut it in, which are very many. Nice and clean it, wash it down. All you do, you keep the skins on, you, you just cube it, slice them, and you mug this in water and let it stand for a week. Eight pollination in the greenhouse. You see I've got a mist spraying from underneath on the flowers. This is tomatoes, peppers, cucumber, don't matter what it is. As long as the sun's off them, don't be it. As you can see, the sun's gone behind it, the tree. You just help in pollination, because if it, it is indoors, you're going to get as, as many little chaps. My cormorants are coming on, my gladdies, chuffed with them. We'll have to straighten them up soon, which is about now. So I'll get some canes in all the pots. All we're doing is helping them up to stay upright. Uh, it's just easier for later on. I flower better and if you keep them upright, same as everything else. Keep your onions upright, you get a good shape on you, like we're doing there. Right, these were... Uh, Safrain, a new strain of uh, eight ounce onion from Select Seeds. My mate Dave from Chesterfield give me these. I'm pleased with these so far. And, uh, you got to help them out. So they've had new canes on as well, extending on the onion rings. Trading sheds. First time ever run out of compost. We've got some on order. Always organised. Except that they was running late. So myself, Johnny, uh, Mark and Paul on going a bit until they did eventually come. Mark supplied the, the beer. 
and then G in the beer and the cobs and yellow my good one. We had a pallet of grow bags. Flogging these for 280 each. And we also had a pallet of uh, compost. Flogging that um, four quid a bag. Clover, he never good. In fact, it's, uh, it had no complaints about that yet, so doing that as well. Well, I got me a new toy <coughs> from, um, this is a worm bin from Urban Worms. It's just a bucket, got a little tap on the end. There's four little uh, feet that go in and they tray with holes in. And then your manure, this is all supplied. Then your bedding, which is your carbon. I'll put my own in, this there is, and then you put your worms in. Tiger worms, Bradley worms, red wrigglers, a few names for them, but as long as they're composting worms. Put them in, keep them uh, damp, a bit moist, not, not over watered, although they got drainage, but I uh, just look after them, and I'll fed these again today. I'll probably put that on next week. Just keep them in the dark, Frost free, which it should be now anyway. And uh, that's for later on. Now I've chopped all the um, shoots off. Uh, I cut all the, the top leaves off as well. Give everything else room to uh, breathe. Feeding down the plot. Once uh, 10 days or something, I'll have liquid fish, everything. Looking at the, um, if you look at that cabbage bottom right leaf, look at those a grub on it, caterpillar. I thought some of those just have a quiet nose. And when I had closer inspection, it was just a blister on the leaf, it weren't a grub. So, and there's nothing behind it, nothing in it, nothing weird. Sprouts which are outside, pigeons have started yomp, landing on the end, on the tops of them, and eating my bloody sprouts. You can see better there when they've been yomping away. I had these as plugs from a uh, little a couple of months ago. They bung some good stuff out there, did you? can see the pigeons there where they've crapped all over the sprouts. So I knew it was them. So I've got to cover them. I'll get my old net out. Just the netting I had from the fruit cage, I've got a bit left over. So I've netted that lot. Just keep the little horrors away. Always summer. Right back to me, rhubarb. It's had a week. Uh, <coughs> this is now drained. Got rid of the rhubarb. In there, you had um, demerara sugar. This is four pound demerara sugar, a pound of minced raisins. I use the demerara sugar on all my wines now just to give it a kick. If you use raisins, that gives it an extra kick as well. And you stir daily when it ceases to work, then you jar it. And then check it after six months. Obviously, bungy your, le your least in. Yeast, last thing you do. And there's juice of two onions as well. Let me come back onto him later on. This is another one I have from Lidl. Um, I think it's two years ago. Love these, the colour of these are beautiful. You get them in Spain or whatever. So the one on the left was from Lidl uh, about a month ago. The one on, was on the right is mine from last year. But you've got to keep them in the pots. If you put them outside <coughs> uh, and leave them out, the frost will job them. Mine's just started coming back into colour again, so I'm going to bug him out. I put him in a bigger pot from what he was in last year. And uh, just bury the pot and then cover the pot all together so people don't see it. Then, at the end of the season, you can just get him up and if he needs it, pot him on into a bigger pot. Mate Jason, come round, give, give me some uh, freebies. Top right, you can see there's beetroot, clumps of beetroot there as well. So, this is extra bedding for me. He wants it. Straws, if they're ready, pick them. If anything's ready, pick it. That plant has got to survive. So the more you pick, the more they throw. You get straw underneath, the produce will be nice and clean. Because it ain't had splashes from rain or whatever on the dirt, which bounces back up. 
So a bonus for me having straw underneath as well. I've got clean fruit, which is what I want. Plugs of beetroot, I weren't gonna bother with these because we, uh, I've still got some from last year, meaning we ain't got a show this year. So I don't need pickled beetroot for that. But because I've got spare rooms, I'm not growing a heavy veg or as much. I'm still doing it, but not as much. So I'm planting out these plugs. Pull back the cover and I've only gone down a couple of inches full of worms. Look at that beautiful stuff. No caking because I've had a cover on. And there's no caking after I've planted it because I've got straw on. Uh, with the warm weather we've had, people who ain't got nothing on top of the beds, whatever. The, the soil is solid, it's caked over. You've got a raised bed, look after them, and they'll cake over. Right, all planted out, good watering. And then it's covered with um, my rabbit muck and straw. And that is now about three inches on. Or I'll get another catch up on that next week or 10 days time whenever I do my next one. But they're doing well. These are down the plot, the gobo, eight ounce onions, plus in the middle I got my Peter Old on exhibition onion from a seed. Uh, this seed is from my mate Dave of Chesterfield again. But these are doing well. You gotta keep an eye on them, keeping them in with the in the hoops. And uh, if they need straightening up, then I'll straighten them up with, with a bit of velcro. We'll like say flogging little rolls from Wilco. One of my grapevines has uh, kicked the bucket, nothing on him whatsoever, so I'm gonna take him off. He's going down to the stem itself when it comes out of the ground, I've got a bit of growth, so I'm going to cut him straight back to there so it can start going from there. There he is, cut, him, cut the chap off so it can spur from there. we we'll probably take him this year to go halfway down that wire. And because I've just uh, cut his head off, whatever, I'll get him a nice feed, give him a little pick-me-up, plus the other grapevine next to him because he's still all right. Some late runners I took of the strawberries, I thought well I'll give them a try and bunged them in pots and that worked because I'm giving me strawberries so you can't take them too late It's Lynn's birthday during the week and uh, Ben bought her a rose, Floribunda this is a scented rose so I bunged him in in a gap, we've only got many gaps left now for big stuff uh, put a bit of mic under him, give him a good way to him this is the Dale Toten, heavy pepper, end of the greenhouse. Nice one coming in the middle there. Just giving everything a good one I've got. Shallots in the middle, exhibition shallots and pickling. Uh, these need thinning out. It's usually four or five I've got to one. Both I've got four this time. But I need thinning out. Down to three. And you get a, a better shape on the shallot. There ain't no sides on them, no dents. If I wanted the big ones, then I'd, I'd thin these down to two. The good thing about the thinnings, we had a, a barbie, so we use them as well. I get some to me, cousin, and uh, Aaron had some and all. We had a skip down the plot. The skip man made a cock up. I'd already paid for it. He did him a, not a mouthful, but a. As a sweetener, he gave me a big skip, and we filled it. He left it five minutes before he took it away. We only asked for the 12 yard, all paid for. So we dipped in there with that one. This little chap's coming on well. Uh, I forget his name, somebody tell me. Australia, love him. I think this one's Indian Summer, the first one. But uh, these, these are brilliant. Must that's getting flour. Uh, they stay in flower to the first frost. I think that one's sunlight, I ain't sure. Somebody might let me know. But uh, love them. They do well that, that you can get the, the large ones and you can get the dwarf ones as bedding. You got one dwarf and I bonged him on a, a, a member of Zamajim. A couple of spares, so I bung them in a nice little pot. Right, we got a gap at the back of our new fence. 
which look a bit bland, so I want to get a bit of colour in there. See the gap there, it's only a three inch gap. So I've got all the rubbish out and I've put some uh, decent compost in. Multi purpose compost, a bit of worm cast, and a uh, mixture of vermiculite. So it's got a bit of summit to go at. And uh, these, <coughs> which are Aquilegia. I had these as plugs, these are uh, Swan Mix obviously. I think this two or three to a cup. I've got a few more of these for bedding as well. So I've just bunged half a dozen of these in, firmed them in with the compost, whizzed them nice and firm, and then uh, top dressed again. And uh, the level now is just below the top brick, meaning when I do wet, it ain't gonna run off. So I'll give them a bit of watering, bit of feed as well. This is a uh, pick me up, and uh, they don't get much sun. Probably only an hour a day, but uh, we'll see how they go. If it don't work, then I'll, I'll see what small bedding plants don't like sun too much. This little chap's throwing more colours again. It's a corker now, so I just took another photo, but uh, we'll get that one later on. Uh, the stuff in the tunnel is doing well. I've only got one ever onion, and but these pot leaves are doing well. But you've got to water everything and feed, obviously. So everything on the pot once a week gets a good soak in strawberries. Spuds, don't forget spuds, 90% water. In fact, uh, humans, our bodies are made up of 60% water. So veg, flowers and fruit are made up of weight as well. So don't let them dry out. And every now and then, give them a feed, which is a pick me up. That's me, uh, Black Current, Ben Conan, he's done well. He's a corker, he's, and I'm growing him upwards instead of outers. Right, another delivery. This was a blueberry on the right, and a there it is, Star Jasmine. Save me, rocking my bloody brain. But when they packed these two, they put one on top of the other and it smashed the, the pot of one. I had this uh, blueberry. That's what everything come in. There's two heavy pots plus tubers and uh, plugs. And it's been thrown around like a... Uh, you can see the smashed pot there. This is my jasmine star. And uh, these are scented as well, but I've got a little gap on the right of it in my trellis, so this is going in there. And this was tied up, there was four shoots, so what I did when I cut all the ties off, made me old fistful of Mike Rizal in the hole, planted them out, given a good waiting, and then I opened them up, cut all the ties off, and I got four different uh, shoots coming off, meaning I could open them up and separate them. Yeah, the show should be better so it ain't just all bunched together and cover that gap all together these three was in there as well these are tubers are flame lily I've seen nothing like them before so anything to do with them you get a nice size pot somebody else I've learned 12 inch across the top this is the size of the pot 12 inch and it's 12 inch deep and all there's a big holes in the bottom, bit of paper on the, on the bottom and they stop the compost going through it there. So this has got a, a good size to it. Should give them a bit of room. Plant them horizontal and uh, cover them about an inch, inch and a half and put them in the warm place. Some the other side, Digitalis, Illumination Flame. These were plugs as well. So these went in. Blueberry needs ericaceous compost. If you haven't got ericaceous compost, make your own up. Because they need between 4 and 5 pH. Sawdust, which I've got, so I'm making my own ericaceous. 
the sawdust, sand, really good in. <coughs> any sand will do. This is always called rough sand, but any any sand will do anything. Well rotted manure, if you've got it. Any manure, if you like, because uh, you like a big dollop of manure. Somewhere else, spent coffee grounds. I've got this anyway, but uh, that's a bit acidic as well. Um, blue drop, this um, this one is. Nice big pot, which I want. Uh, vermiculite, I'll throw that with, with in with everything. So I'm going to bung that in as well. We get these acid loving plants. Same again, bit of paper on the bottom. Stop me compost, legging it out of the holes. And uh, take him out of his pot. Did you need it coming out anyway, as you can see. Now I've got the pot size. So my big pot, which I have got. And because the plant was off skew anyway, I'll put that plant a bit, not centre, but off skew in the big pot, so I can line him up central. As you can see him on the left, he's a bit uh, not central. So when I do pot him up, get the shower on. The money's in the, on top of the table. 50 quid if he's done. Plant him up in the middle, which you don't see, then wait him. And uh, mark him up, tell him what he is. This is a late flowering, September, early September. That's what I've had him for our show. That's what I'm going for. And uh, will cows, quite a few places you can get the, um, the feed from. But don't forget to feed. And that will look after the plant as well. So we get a nice sunny day. The house plants come out as well. And they're being fed and weighted. Look after them. And especially the weather we have been having, it's going to be naff again now. But we've had some good days. And, uh, he's telling me he wants a drink, so I'll, I'll give him a drink. And a feed once a week. Which is tomato feed or massive drop. And uh, the mist spray underneath when the sun goes off, that's normal. And most things. But chilies are doing well so far. Trellis, top of the garden, that's filling out now, nice bit more colour, um, you do well with that. Right, intermediate leaves, them are growing that well, and bursting through my me, uh, me sleeves, so what I've had to do is get some builder's dam course, cut out slits and put that in between the pipe legging. Now it's, that'll give me uh, a nice white blanch on my leaves. You get no greening. I know we ain't got a show this year, but uh, I'm still, we're going to still have a, a show on the computer. And spraying underneath, still spraying for thrip or whatever. We've still got the little. Went down the plot, making me a goose egg, duck egg, and chicken eggs. Straws. Right, coddling moth, pain in the arse. This is a coddling moth trap. This is a... There's a little chap, there's a, there's a sticky page which um, open up. Pheromone lure, which is in there. And that lure, lures a little chaps in there. I've got one of these bottom uh, orchard, one at the top. But these last about nine weeks and uh, this stops the maggots getting into your apples and pears hopefully epsom salts i'm going to do me uh, fruit trees these get jobbed about twice a year and i know we got rain coming so i'm gonna epsom salts all the uh, fruit trees magnesium sulfate this is one of the six major nutrients it is not a trace element, I meaning it's good for everything. Drench, foliar feed, one teaspoon per litre. Showmaster onions, top of the garden. These need uh, new canes in, extending the tops. More onion rings in. These have picked up, luckily. 
so I've got away with them. Good job. Right, for me, um, old <coughs> Compost King page, just as a, to thank me followers, I had a competition as to how many raised beds I got. The first one on the plot is between the, the two Union Jacks. It's the only raised bed that's going north to south. That's me raspberry bed. The next one is uh, three beds at the top and bottom structure. I've got three raised beds in there. Next one up for that is in me uh, tunnel. One raised bed in the middle of that one. In my next structure, going up the plot, I've got two raised beds in that one. This has got me heavy vegging and me beetroot. Nice fan at the end, solar powered. In the top of that, I've got a uh, five raised beds up to me fruit cage. So all together, I've got 12 raised beds on the plot. This is the back garden. First one's in the tunnel. Show Cedarfoa. I've got two more raised beds there, one in the middle and one at the back end. Then I've got another raised bed. As you've just seen me blanching intermediates. One little raised bed, which I had a bit of room left, so I thought I'm gonna do some of So the small raised bed there. And then just one more to go, which is at the end of the tunnel, which we can see there, which has got me um, super pot leaks in. Except me glad he's in the road. So there's six up the garden, 18 down the water. Uh, so give me a, a total of 18. Quite a few entered, four people got it. Them lot we put into a hat, made a draw, and uh, Mary got it. Mary O'Shea. Bunging them out <coughs> in the post, it was cheaper to put them together. I'm going to do another competition later on, and that will be the prize for that. But uh, we'll come on to that later. I'll think of some of it. Right, uh, we've never had weather like this for my compost bins, meaning them too hot, even with the white repelling the heat and the light. So I'm putting the plastic out on the bottom where the little door is, just to let a bit more air circulation. I've got air anyway, because all the, all the lids are off tilt, if you know what I mean. But that's better. All the white is taped up again. And, uh, that should look after me worms even more. Me heavy veg, uh, these are the red cabbage. Got two of them going in, and I've just started heartening up, which is good. I know that in our shows, but I've still got to trial and do better. Got not beat last year's, and I know I'm doing all right. Sprouts, which I netted, this is working in the sense which you'll see in a minute. There's a pigeon landing on the top and eating all the, the sprouts, which you can see bottom left, where they did. Now I've got four or five new leaves on top, nice and clean. Strawberries, the more you pick, the more you're gonna get, because the plant has gotta throw more fruit to survive. And it works. Look at him, corker. <coughs> Is it a loop? I can't really remember. I can't remember the name of the chap. Somebody tell me. Right, one spring cabbage. This is the third of cutting for dinner. I just take the leaves off now instead of wasting the plant. And that, that's uh, two leaves. We had them last night. And we had uh, three adults. It's a beautiful taste. And we made from Wolverhampton. He's already picked his onions. He's a good lad. It must have gone in early. And uh, that's it guys and gals. Until I see you next time. Look after yourselves. It's like my haircut, I've got a bloody dent.